you played with, to me, my roots growing up in New York. You played, you were with teammates for a long time. You know Reggie Jackson probably as well as anybody. <laughs> yeah. He's iconic. The name represents baseball. What can you tell me about Reggie that I don't know? Oh, golly. Reggie, uh, he, was, he was a great guy. I got along with him real well. Um, he stayed with me. Uh, here in Birmingham for about a month. He couldn't find a place to live, so uh, he, I had an extra room at my apartment. It's Reggie will also be a part of your lore because of this. Yeah, Reggie started the mustache. He came to spring <laughs> training in 72 with a mustache and, and wouldn't shave it off. And so myself and Catfish Hunter, Daryl Knowles, there was about three of us decided to grow mustaches. And we figured if we grow them, Dick Williams was our manager. He would say, okay, guys, cut it off. And Reggie would have to cut his off. But uh, Charlie Finley, our crazy owner, he thought uh, mustaches was a great idea. And so he told everybody on the ball club, if you make the team opening day, and you got a mustache, you get 300 bucks. And that's the only reason why I grew this. 300 bucks. 300 and it bucks. stayed. Yeah, it stayed. <laughs> well, it's tough to cut it off after winning the World Series three in a row. Right. So I kept it. Do you have pictures of you? Does anybody have pictures? Is there anything, with, uh, anybody have proof that you actually weren't born and raised with a mustache? <laughs> well, my first three or four baseball cards uh, in 69, 70, and 71 were no mustache. Let's go get those. Welcome back to our Bulldog Spotlight. Today we're with Lydia McGee, the, the all everything. Maybe you're like a, a Swiss army knife. And, and, and I'll tell you why, that's a compliment because uh, when you combine all the things on the court and off the court, I'm not sure that we've discovered anything you can't do. You know, that's a compliment. I mean, your yeah. teammates <laughs> and me getting to know you. All right, we're back at halftime. Blazers up 33-32. Kurt Bloom and the head baseball coach here on campus, Brian Shoup. And we got about a couple weeks. You usually get started right around Valentine's Day, don't you? Uh, Valentine's Day is our banquet this year. Uh, meet the team banquets. We're making it easy on the husbands. All they got to do is come to the banquet. <laughs> and then we open on Friday the 15th, the National Division One start date. Where are you at? Where exactly are you opening? In oh, at home, Regents Field. Okay, the, the, I've heard of that the place. The Palace. Yes, you have. And, and there's some good highlights. I, I was thinking about this for a moment. Typically, Coach, you guys do open at home because of the weather. I was doing a broadcast the other day where we talked about northern teams come down. Do you prefer to open at home or does it matter to you at all? It was a brisk and chilly day up here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And for the Auburn Tigers, their morning game struggles continued. The Auburn Tigers did not play very well. But for the Tigers, there is good news. After two straight games on the road, the Auburn Tigers return home. They will play Kentucky this upcoming Saturday. From Fayetteville, Arkansas, this is Kurt Bloom. In a neat moment, Gavin Sheets will bat, and uh, Larry Sheets, his dad, getting a more comfortable position. You got uh, you got game face on watching him, huh? Is it nervous <laughs> for you? It is. It's, You're not going to admit it, but it, it, it is. It, it, um, you want you know, him to do well. Absolutely. Obviously. You know. Absolutely. 24, by the way, is that was that your number? It was point? not. It was not. Where it did you get the 24 from? Any idea? I I don't know that Ken Griffey Jr. But. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Two, two outside, so he wanted to get as far away from 18 as uh, <laughs> as he possibly could. Hey, 18 had a pretty good career. <laughs> oh, don't kid yourself. 18, hey, 18 put him through college. 